let's add a few more points uh, to this idea of uh, numerical methods. So we looked at this table already. Oops, sorry. Uh, to get my uh, where is my oh I'm not in the okay so uh, we looked at this table of uh, numerical discretizations these are called discretizations this is a continuous representation of the first derivative and this is the discretization and we have said it looks similar for time and space uh, and there is no reason why delta t or delta x or delta y, delta z, whatever, they have to be constant in time or space. There are many situations in which uh, we end up using uh, varying discretization steps. Let's say delta x, delta t, delta y are the steps of discretizations. Uh, so let's look at it another way to come at another uh, numerical method. So we are again back to our equation uh, showing the anomaly of temperature around the uh, climatology as uh, we derived minus uh, 4 epsilon sigma t to the t bar cube divided by h rho c times t tilde. We said this is a linear uh, differential equation uh, and we s uh, can write an exponential solution for it and uh, in the continuous form, we can simplify this and write it as dt dt equal to minus at, where we have dropped the tilde now, and we know that it represents the deviation from the mean. So, f for simplicity, this is the equation we are dealing with, and we discretize it again as tn plus 1 minus tn divided by delta t. This is another general notation where n is used very traditionally for time steps and i, j and k are used for spatial uh, discretization in x, y and z directions. So we are writing this as t n plus 1 minus t n divided by delta t equals minus a times t n. So t n is the value at uh, any time step n delta t. So when you integrate forward you typically start with the initial value and then start integrating forward and uh, usually you also have things like boundary conditions and the equations are not always so linear and so on and so forth. We'll come uh, to those later on. So let's write again using our uh, traditional approach t n plus 1 then is just equal to t at uh, value of t at time step n minus a times uh, t n times delta t. That is just this equation, not a big deal. So simplify that as 1 minus a delta t times t n and so on and for times uh, you can uh, continue that argument till time step n plus 1 so 1 minus a delta t uh, to the n plus 1 times t0 where t0 is the time step at n equals 0 remember n was 0 1 2 3 and so forth so for any n the expression becomes y mi 1 minus a delta t uh, uh, to the n plus 1 times t0. Okay, so the term gets multiplied along the way. So then we can write the expression uh, anomaly time t uh, at time t is uh, t at uh, n delta t. Uh, delta t is the time step and that's written as tn equal to t0 times 1 minus a delta t to the n which is equal to t0 times 1 plus 1 or s uh, to the minus s a t where we have just simplified uh, s uh, as minus 1 over a delta t so that just becomes plus 1 over s and n is uh, using that expression minus s a t. This is just a simple manipulation to make it uh, look uh, you know uh, ideal for discretization. So t0 times 1 plus 1 over s uh, minus, it, we keep the s inside, so this becomes just a function of s which is 1 over a delta t and that power minus a t where a is our h uh, alpha rho c whatever this expression is our a and uh, that's the expression in time t. So now we have again an exponential expression for uh, 
uh, temperature evolution in time as a value as a uh, function of the initial temperature and here it's easy to show that as s tends to infinity which means delta t tends to zero then t zero times one plus one over s to the s two minus a t tends towards or becomes t zero times e to the minus a t which is what we had derived before so what we did essentially is take our original equation we had done the direct uh, analytic solution of the linear differential uh, ordinary differential equation now we approached the same solution by discretizing it and then taking uh, s to infinity or driving delta t to zero which is a typical way in which we go from uh, discrete to continuous solutions with delta t being small enough right so here again our solution was t uh, tilde t is a equal a times e to the minus t over tau well, tau was the characteristic time we said h rho c divided by 4 epsilon sigma t bar to the cube so that's the similar solution we are getting via the discretization okay so from uh, equation 212 here uh, it can be derived that for delta t equals 1 over a the scheme yields tn equals 0 whereas for delta t uh, 2 over 8 yields tn is minus 1 to the n t 0 both results do not make any sense if you just look at this discretization um, this is a distinctive feature of the equation to be solved central differences may also cause general problems in the case for example that periodic solutions with unluckily chosen time steps should be calculated so what does it mean if you don't understand don't worry about it when you discretize and uh, derive an analytic expression here in terms of uh, discretized delta t we have derived an expression for uh, temperature at uh, time step n plus 1 in terms of the initial temperature at time step 0 and the uh, function that uh, is involved in the time derivative times the discrete time step and this can lead to nonsensical answer so you have to be very very careful so look at this expression 212 tn plus 1 tn minus a tn delta t which is very simple and straightforward makes sense when we start and then you keep writing this recursively for time step n plus 1 and then you can end up with issues okay so let's look at it in another way let's say we have dy dx equals f uh, uh, dy dx is a function of f uh, and direction x and y itself the function uh, that we are trying to solve for itself is dependent on longitude as well so you can just think of it as um, temperature derivative in the longitudinal direction and the temperature is long longitudinally dependent so it's a function of longitude and Long temperature at that longitude with an initial condition yx0 of y0 so if you start at date line with some value that's the say y0 for EBM given in equation 2.1 which was this equation we looked at the following correspondences hold so we can say y is our uh, temperature t x is our uh, uh, time t so dt dt is a function of uh, time uh, function of temperature so we have expression t here and um, uh, t itself as a function of time right so t here is a function of time itself so then f of x of uh, f the function <laughs> of x and y in uh, this equation is 1 minus alpha s0 divided by 4 uh, h rho c which we divide through and get that so that's basically the equivalent of this simplified as a general form why are we doing that because we want to again write the discretization y n plus 1 is y n plus delta x uh, with function uh, evaluated at x n and y n 
then of the function at xn and yn using a numerical method called Range Kata uh, can be written as 1 sixth pl uh, times k1 plus 2k2 plus 2k3 plus k4 where k1 is f at x and y n, k2 is the uh, function evaluated at half a step uh, in x direction and uh, uh, y evaluated at uh, half a step in the x direction times k1. So you have this complex expression of k1, k2, k3, k4 giving you the next value of y uh, given the previous value of y as a function of your step. So tn plus 1 as a function of tn uh, plus delta t times the uh, function f uh, which is this one evaluated at that time. So this method is uh, accurate, much more accurate, but you can imagine this is not going to be very useful because here f is uh, uh, assumed to be a continuous function that is known and can be evaluated in this way which is almost never the case in our climate models. So Runge Kutta method is not really used in any climate models, but it gives you a good example of the point we're trying to make uh, here. So if we look now for the solution of uh, 2.6, which is uh, this equation. So remember we could solve this analytically, but we are using this as an, a paradigm for explaining discretization and finding solutions. So solving that equation numerically, here is time in days and temperature distribution t tilde now t tilde starting at uh, time zero. So the uh, analytical solution is shown in the red line. So the exact solution of the linearized system is drawn here in the red line so that you can compare numerical solutions and which tell you the kind of errors you get when you discretize and solve uh, equations numerically. This is of con uh, uh, constant uh, concern and something that has to be dealt with every time you do numerical simulations of any system. So this is just a good way of thinking about it. So here Euler scheme uh, and time steps of 12, 24, 36 and 50 days are used here. So you can see that when you use 50 days you got crazy solutions and uh, the exact solution is shown in the red line and the result from the classical Rangakura is labeled with the green circles. So when we do this high order accuracy scheme, uh, because we know the function, you get very good solutions here. But here time step is used uh, 50 days. So what does this tell you? That the time step you choose has to depend on the processes you are looking at. So if you have, let's say, a wave in the system that travels at a certain speed, when you discretize the system, the wave is going to propagate with its characteristic phase speed. And in one time step, uh, if you jump the way, the, if you move faster numerically than the wave would move, then you induce numerical errors. Okay, so you can see that when you use a value of 50 days, you have produced here some nonsensical solutions, whereas with 12 days and 24 days, uh, it's looking still reasonable with some errors. By 36, it's getting uh, quite bad, and then by 50, it has gone bonkers, right? Whereas a high accuracy, uh, high numerical accuracy of your discretization gives a very good uh, solution compared to the analytic solution. So this is ex the exercise that shows you some of the issues that we have to deal with when we do discretizations. Uh, as I said before, this extends to uh, maintaining positive definiteness of things like humidity, precipitation, uh, or um, other chemicals, for example, and so on. And also about crossing the mountains with appropriate spatial steps, um, doing integration of very nonlinear processes with small enough uh, temperature times, uh, times, time step in time, and so on. And um, this also goes to what we said before. The, the smaller the delta x and delta y you choose, for example, 
more the number of discrete steps you have, which means the computational expense goes up. So when we say grid resolution, remember before we used the idea of grid resolution, when you increase the grid resolution, you are decreasing delta x, delta y, delta z in the x, y, z direction, which improves the representation of the problem, but it increases computational cost. Similarly, delta T, if you want to make a forecast for six days and your delta T is very small, then you have to integrate many, many, many time steps, so it is computationally expensive. If you're making a 24-hour forecast, your forecast better be done well before 24 hours because you want to issue a warning about 24-hour uh, weather event, right? So that's also a consideration, how fast you can integrate, which of course depends on uh, how big the computer is or how big the domain is. For example, we looked at an example of a regional model over Europe uh, as opposed to global model we use for doing climate predictions and climate projections and so on and so forth. So all these are numerical issues one has to uh, worry about. We'll come back and add a few more points, okay?